This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about why we need a soft fork now. And I wanted to put all this information together in one video so it'd be easy to share. The context for this is we now have a major crisis on our hands. More and more Bitcoin nodes running Bitcoin Core 30 have been popping up. Bitcoin Core 30 is a highly contentious node software update. And it's so contentious, in fact, that the process of trying to force it down Bitcoiners' throats led to 20% of the Bitcoin network abandoning Bitcoin Core and moving to Bitcoin Knots. And that's unprecedented in Bitcoin's history, as we can see here. We're getting a little bit of a pullback in Bitcoin Knots nodes, but we're still currently at about 18 to 20% of the network. Here's Core 30 nodes currently at about 11.82% of the network. Bitcoin Knots adoption has been extremely impressive, but it cannot hide the fact that almost 12% of the Bitcoin network is now actively running software, namely Bitcoin Core 30, that relays large op returns around the network. Large op returns expose the Bitcoin network to the greatest risks from arbitrary data, from non-monetary data, because ever since Bitcoin Core version 0.9.0 was rolled out in 2014, op return has been the place specifically designated and documented by the reference implementation, enshrined in practice, established by custom and convention, OpReturn has been the place in Bitcoin to put non-monetary data that you would like Bitcoin nodes to relay around the network so that miners can pick them up and include it in a block. Now, originally in 2014, the maximum amount of data that you could put in an OpReturn that would be relayed around the network by nodes was limited to 40 bytes. And then this limit was raised to 80 bytes in 2015 with the release of Bitcoin Core version 0.11. Point zero. And now in 2025, the effective limit has been blown open to 100,000 bytes. Basically, data carrier was uncapped by default in pull request 32406, but transaction size cap of 100,000 bytes is still being enforced. Uh, so that's what's providing that cap at 100,000 bytes. Now, I would suggest here that moving a default parameter from 80 bytes to 100,000 bytes is not what conservative software development should look like. And the reference implementation for Bitcoin's node software should be the one that is doing conservative software development development. If you're finding this video interesting so far, I just pause really briefly here to ask you to help to support the channel. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member, especially someone who's interested in what's happening with the Bitcoin uh, soft fork that's coming up, the op return debate, and all of these things. Now, to put this in perspective, blowing open op return from 80 bytes to 100,000 bytes, I wanted to show you what a million bytes, in other words, a megabyte looks like, 100,000 bytes, 1,000 thousand bytes and a hundred bytes. So let's first look at what a million byte picture looks like. That's a million bytes. This is a hundred thousand bytes. So this is what's currently allowed in op return. This is far too much data uh, that we really don't need on a monetary network. But again, a million bytes, hundred thousand bytes, a thousand bytes, and then a hundred bytes. hundred bytes is closer to where these things should be capped out, currently capped out uh, before this update at 80 bytes. And Bitcoin Knots is still enforcing uh, 40 bytes or 80 bytes, depending where you set it. Now, the latter image of a blob of data, this hundred bytes, this is the same picture of Trump just shrunk. Latter image or blob of data of 100 bytes is clearly not a risk to the network, whether it's CSAM, state secrets, trade secrets, copyrighted material, illegal political content, a sacrilegious cartoon of Muhammad or another religious figure, etc., and a host of other examples of non monetary data that may be illegal or culturally offensive or just unnecessary to have on Bitcoin. Uh, but it could be illegal or culturally offensive, culturally offensive in one or more of hundreds of jurisdictions around the world. So you're welcome to fight for the right to store and distribute illegal non-monetary data, but that's not a fight that I'm currently interested in, and that's not why I came to Bitcoin. I came to Bitcoin to use it as money, and as a Bitcoin node runner, I'm happy to store a ledger of past monetary transactions, even if they include records of illegal or immoral financial activity. That's not the problem, just storing the record of a pseudonymous financial transaction that took place in the past. The problem is when you're being forced to store a ledger full of non-monetary data, and that's where just a host of different risks and different jurisdictional risks come into the picture. So I'm happy to store a ledger of past monetary transactions. I'm not happy to store a ledger full of non-monetary data. So Bitcoin is indeed money for enemies, as we like to say, 
but it's not free cloud storage for enemies. And you should use BitTorrent or Nostra or something like that if you want to distribute illegal non-monetary data. You shouldn't be using Bitcoin for it. It's just the wrong tool for the job. The blocks are very small and it's basically a monetary network, so it shouldn't be used for this. So as we saw with the images above, 100 bytes of non-monetary data is clearly not a risk to the network. Having something like this on the network in a transaction, that's not a risk. While expanding the attack surface to 100,000 bytes clearly is. That's 100,000 bytes of data, and you can show a lot of different stuff in something that large. It's really all downside and no upside having a lot of non-monetary data on Bitcoin because it's completely unnecessary for a non for I'm sorry, for a monetary network to be relaying large blobs of non-monetary data like this at all. And it was sensible mempool policy, sensible relay policy you, that used to keep these kinds of images, uh, these kind of unconfirmed or not yet mined large images and other blobs of unconfirmed non-monetary data from being widely relayed around the network by nodes. That is now sadly no longer the case, thanks to increased adoption of Bitcoin Core 30, which by default allows nodes to relay 100,000 byte hop returns around the network. So you can have images like this being relayed around the network. To what extent this is organic adoption of Bitcoin Core 30 or Sybil attack, in which case that would be individual entities spinning up large numbers of core nodes to create the illusion of real adoption. But whether this is real organic adoption or Sybil attack, all these Bitcoin Core 30 nodes remains to be seen. But either way, I think the risk to the Bitcoin network is real and needs to be mitigated, mitigated as soon as possible now that the op return uh, the op return cat is out of the bag. This needs to be fixed at the consensus level, i.e. at the level of mined blocks, rather than just at the mempool or policy level, which deals more with unconfirmed or unmined transactions that are being relayed by nodes. We simply cannot have the place specifically designated and documented by the reference implementation, enshrined in practice, established by custom and convention. We simply cannot have this place filled up with 100,000 bytes of whatever the world's sickest minds and pervs can dream up that must then be downloaded and stored forever by any new Bitcoiner who wants to run a node. Imagine if this was not just a picture of Trump, but was something much, much more offensive. It's even worse when you realize that this data, once it's in the Bitcoin blockchain, can never be deleted or pruned without destroying the ability of Bitcoin nodes to bootstrap new Bitcoin nodes or run indexers like Electrum servers that make using a Bitcoin wallet with your node possible. Now in a pre-Bitcoin Core 30 world, large op returns, those greater than 80 bytes, would not be relayed by nodes, but could still be sent to miners using Libra Relay or direct submission services like Slipstream, and could then be included in blocks as consensus valid transactions. But even today, there's still very few Libra Relay nodes and services like Slipstream do active content moderation to ensure that illegal material like large CSAM op returns, for example, will not be included in blocks mined by Mara. So up until the release of Core 30, there were some natural barriers in place that prevented the worst kind of non-monetary data from ending up in blocks. But now with Core 30, it's possible to relay the worst kind of non-monetary data, sending it from Core 30 node to Core 30 node until a miner picks it up from the P2P network and includes it in a block, thus providing plausible deniability to mining pools that mine large op returns. They could just say, well, we're just mining stuff that's been approved by the reference implementation and that the P2P network is relaying to us. You don't want us to do uh, content moderation, do you? But now, thanks to Core's recklessness and stupidity, the cat is out of the bag and unfortunately can only be put back into the bag by making it impossible to include large blobs of non-monetary data in mine blocks. These should never have been allowed to be included to begin with, but we did have some reasonable protection until Bitcoin Core 30 because these things at least weren't being relayed, which meant it was much more difficult to get them into blocks. So if we want to change this where these can no longer be included in blocks, that means a soft fork. In other words, a change at the consensus level, at the level of mined blocks. A soft fork is always a narrowing or tightening of the rules. And so that would, that's how this would be structured. There's no reason to do a hard fork. Hard forks are not backwards compatible and they're quite destructive to the network. So the soft fork is the right tool for this. And the proposed soft fork will take care of these large op returns 
the problem with these while also closing the inscriptions exploit and similar holes that have bloated the chain with garbage. So this is what inscriptions look like. These do nothing, absolutely nothing to make Bitcoin better money or to make Bitcoin a better monetary network. In fact, these bloat your nodes with unnecessary data that you don't need to store in order to use Bitcoin as money. So we'll be following up on this in the next video. We'll be talking about the proposed UASF or MASF. We'll be talking about Dathan Ohm. I'll put a link to his Twitter account right here so you can follow him there as well as the BIP that we'll be talking about. It's not technically called BIP444, though there is a nice website here, which I'll link to as well, that sort of formats the BIP in a better manner. But it's, it's currently called the Reduced Data Temporary Soft Fork number 2017. So we'll go a little bit more into what soft forking will involve in tomorrow or the next day's video. But what I wanted to cover here was sort of put all of this in one place and discuss why we're now at the point of a soft fork. If Core hadn't rolled out version 30 and hadn't been this reckless, we wouldn't even be talking about forks. But unfortunately, this is where we are thanks to Core's recent behavior. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.